Howdy Heroes Hearth, this is Kyle Ferguson, and I'm sitting down today with Crowd Control Lauber to talk about Johanna, the most thrilling of all characters, as I'm sure you've heard <laughs> in Storm mm -hmm, Very much. So this is, I'm really excited about this. This is a great match. You end yeah. up picking some cool stuff, and we'll, we'll see how it goes. You got some combos already going, but the first question out of the box is a scandalous talent that you picked up. <laughs> Loss of hope. Loss yeah. of hope. Uh, so yeah. all I ever hear from my fellow Storm League uh, companions is that this is a horrible choice. But I think I know why you're going for it here. Uh, wh what's the choice in your book? Uh, well, usually when I play Jana, I like hold your ground. I think it's by far the best talent. But there's a little talent called... Uh, What's it called? Shield Break or something? Shattering Throw, I think it's called, from Varian. Yeah. On level 13. Um, so the reason I, I take Loss of Hope is just because they have Varian. Uh, it's a bit a bit weaker early game, but after 13, when Varian can just remove your shield instant, this is like the better talent. And this is also because Johanna's Iron Skin ends the Unstoppable early if you lose your shield. So exactly. since they're going to bust in your shield this whole game with the Tychus, with a Chromie, with a Leoric, I mean, you get focus fired for the majority of this match. Mm -hmm. Pretty good idea to have a little bit of self-healing that's not going to be dependent. Yeah, yeah, it's also good with N because his healing is, is kind of weak, right? Like uh, his power is in his uh, um, pull, right, on D. So uh, it also helps me sustain more of fights. Now here you're going around and just leading the soak on Johanna. Anything you're doing special with your own team or the enemy team? Um, right now we're just like trying to control the waves, um, trying to make sure we, we see where they are, know what they're doing. Now we're already kind of knowing that they're doing their camp and we're just trying to get our camp up. Uh, usually on Infernal Shrines it's a lot of trading. Sometimes people invade um, when they have the, the better level one. Our uh, thought process was to to uh, start bottom easy uh, because we had Pryo in Diva, um, but sadly she got chunked out of Mech by Tychus, so that plan kind of failed. Uh, so as you could see, Leoric came mid instead, so they had um, the rotation advantage already. Um, so we had to give up the, the bottom camp. And there's a great example of that shield of yours from the uh, Iron Skin just disappearing instantly as mm -hmm. you got into combat. Now, I noticed before you picked Sins Exposed, you were already using Blind on the wave and then that uh, mercenary camp that y'all were taking. Was that just uh -huh. for the pop of damage or helping the Blind make sure everybody stays high health during it? Uh, it's just like extra damage, I guess. I, 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 it's kind of like I do it uh, without thinking, really, when I clear waves. Uh, I'm almost playing like I already have the like talent for. Uh, so just it's just a habit, uh, I guess, yeah. That's fair. Is there, there's a, a bit of contention between the different leagues of play as to what the level four pick should be. So since mm -hmm. Expose gives you more damage to your team as they clear that mark off, and it's going to do the same thing to help, you know, clear objectives and everything else that gets blinded. But mm -hmm. internal, internal retaliation gets that reset on the pit. Would you mm -hmm. ever take that? Uh, usually, if you if you lack any sort of wave clear, maybe you have to take it um, just to try to keep up. Um, but it's also like a good talent to help the extra burst just to finish like a target off. It also helps you in the falling sword build uh, because it gives you more damage when you land on the target you want to burst down. Ah, we'll be getting to that uh, that falling sword business a bit later. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So massive damage to you, your team swirling around the back. Uh, you mentioned that you don't need the additional lane clear. You've got the, the Hanzo, uh, maybe the D.Va helping out with that. Yeah, and... yeah. the D.Va is our main soaker and she clears the waves really fast and she rotates very fast between the waves. She's one of the fastest like dual soaking offliners in the game right now. Um, so I have no reason to take extra wave clear. So tell me about your positioning in this objective because you are manning the enemy side of the map, but you keep going up and down. You got a Hanzo to stay in front of, but Tracer's free to go where she wants, and probably not thinking much about the Diva's positioning either. Mm -hmm. uh, so right now the call was to kill the Lyric, which we, we got, and after the Lyric kill, we want to be able to 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 secure the, the Shrine Minions, or the Monkeys, as you people in NA call it. So here I want to like <laughs> make sure to protect the, my Hanzo, and then I want to zone 
the enemy carries away from the um, the shrine minions. So I'm gonna start walking up here towards the carries. Just force them to hit me instead of the the, the monkeys, and just trade my life or like my HP bar for the objective, which I successfully do. So that's pretty good. Now, throughout these fights, the blind isn't being used exclusively on Tychus on the enemy side, and often is applied to just a mass amount of people that you can hit at the same time. Mm -hmm. Are you not as concerned about blinding Tychus when he's targeting you? Uh, it depends a little bit. Sometimes I know he's he's not really gonna like kill me, except for here, because I cannot troll and I aggro the boss and I get taunted. Sure, I had the uh, building got mad and it happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so usually I just do it when I can hit as many people as possible. So uh, we get that extra damage on all of them. Uh, so make it harder for white main to, to heal up all our damage. Oh, interesting. Uh, so this is more yeah. of a, a counterplay into white main who is really good at maybe spamming or maintaining one target, but multiple targets she struggles into. Yeah, usually I, I like doing it against um, um, healers that that has like more single focus healing. Uh, so versus like a loser or Malf, it's a little bit like it's not really necessary because they can heal a multiple amount of people for a very long time. Um, but let's say if they have uh, like a Rhaegar or something, he has much more trouble healing multiple uh, targets, uh, I'd say. Since he's become so popular recently, is Stukov in that multiple target healing kind of department? Oh yeah, for sure he is. He can heal a lot, especially if he goes the extra healing um, cooldown or whatever it is on, on level 4. Now with Laws of Hope, you're popping it pretty early. It's not something you're using in conjunction with the Iron Skin once you're getting mm -hmm. to that halfway mark. Yeah. Uh, so th the Laws are really just spam as much as possible. Uh, because you're always going to get the, the extra healing from it. Now, this is awesome. And <laughs> uh, there is an Anduin on cooldown now. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who aren't familiar, tell us how this combo works. Um, so the combo is Falling Sword and uh, light Lightning Bomb. Is that what it's called? Yeah, um, Light I'm Bomb. I'm not sure. Yeah, Light Bomb. Um, so the combo is to get the Light Bomb cast on yourself, on the Johanna before she used Falling Sword. So here I am calling um, for um, X-Ray, in this case, to, to use this Lightning Bomb on me. And while I have it on me, uh, I jump up to there using Falling Sword on the target. And where I'm above, the Lightning Bomb will explode in the air, like above them, and still stun them. So they're going to get stunned from the Lightning Bomb when I'm in the air above them. And then I'm going to land and stun them again and it's like a massive CC combo chain with the hands of arrow as well. So your body exists in space, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, teleports forward in a sense, explodes yeah. under you, uh, giving you the shields. Do you still get the shields when you're coming down? Uh, I think so. I'm not 100% sure of that, actually. Uh, you got um, your own button to give yourself shields. You just hit it, too. Yeah. So, so I that... always usually hit the, it hit the button when I land just to negate the damage. Maybe sometimes it's bad, sometimes I shouldn't do it, but I do it out of uh, reflexes, I guess. Um, but I'm not sure about that. I think maybe maybe not. I don't think you get the shield, but I'm not sure. Either way, um, the stun goes off, and now you're yeah, going to but... follow it up with your own stun. So we got a 1.25 second stun followed by a... Stunning them for oh, 0.2 seconds, so just a little knock up. But now they're yeah. slowed by 50% in addition to a condemn that follows up and exactly. a punish and your shield. Exactly. In. Yeah. Yeah. And my E damage on four as well. That's going to help burst. Um, so it's just a lot of damage in a very fast amount of time. So it's very hard for immobile backliners as Chromie or White Mane to react because they don't really have a blink ability or a dash. They just have to like kind of stand there and, and take it almost. Um, so it's really good versus like heroes that cannot move as fast as other heroes. Well, and the damage isn't uh, too bad either. You're getting nah, close it's pretty to good, a, yeah. Yeah, a thousand pretty good. on everything you land on by the time you put everything into it. Would this be a combo that you would do blindly, or is it more of a reaction to Johanna being the primary target of the enemy team? Uh, this is something you can do kind of like blindly. As soon as you see an opening, you just... Like, as long as the Anduin is uh, on your team or in voice with you, 
Um, you just tell him to, to lightning bomb you and he presses the button on you and you just jump in and go in. Um, it's not really a combo you can do in Storm League, I think. I think it takes way too much coordinated play to, to just do with a random player uh, without voice. Well, that window of time is pretty small with the 1.25 yeah. seconds. To, that's the stun. But after 1.5 seconds, how long do you spend in space there after two seconds? Yeah, so you have a 0.5 second window. Mm -hmm. that that needs to be executed in. That's that's fair, that's fair. Uh, also, yeah. considerably considerably shorter with the 50 second cooldown and uh, well, what will you get up to later on with level 20 is very cool. So here's an escape using it. They were mm -hmm. all locked on to you. No reason not to. You're not really in range of Anduin. You'll have it for the next team fight anyway. Yeah, the beauty with Falling Sword is that it's such a short cooldown, right? So you can use it at an engage or an escape, just where the situation requires you to use it. So it's, you can play very, like, carelessly, and then if you end up in a bad situation, you can just ult out, and you will have the ult up uh, very fast anyways. So it's a very spam ult. Uh, going it's not like a mosh pit that you have to, like, hold for a very long time and make sure you get the perfect mosh pit. Going back to your level 7 pickup of Subdue, this <laughs> quest, I think, just bums out a lot of players. They, they never see it done, so they don't want to do this talent, but a very uh -huh. popular talent. Uh, would you ever yes. pick everything, anything else here? Uh, I don't think so. Maybe only if the enemy team had one frontliners. Like, if they only have one melee character, maybe I would pick something else. Like the cooldown reduction. But as long as you can hit two people with Q, it's a very good talent without finishing the quest. Because you still get that 80% slow and no decay as long as you hit the two heart targets together. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it is, it is a darn cool combo, <laughs> and you just yeah. get on top of White Man, and you got D.Va and everybody just ready to pile on with you. Yeah, the beauty with this combo is even if like one of your teammate dies, you can still execute it, and it would be very hard for the enemy team to, to react. So they like kill our Tracer very fast, but we were able to get a count kill just with the combo, basically. Now and the D.Va help, of course. Level 13 hits, and you go with Roar, which feels like an investment the same thing we were doing at 7 hitting the two targets, increasing that burst damage and increasing the flat damage anyway. Anything else on this yeah. tier uh, viable? Um, I I don't think so. I think the Holy Fury, like you, I think someone did a math and you need to land it on like four enemy heroes or something to get a, at least the same amount of damage as Roar does. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's just by far the best talent. You can take Blessed Hammer if you feel like you need to stall, and you have like a stall comp that stall tributes on Cursed Hollow, for example. Um, and you just want to stall the tributes as long as possible while you sp your team split push the other side of the lane. Uh, otherwise, I would always go Roar. Like, it's uh, a very good talent. I, it helps you burst a lot on your Falling Sword. Interesting. So, Blessed Hammer isn't really a poke tool. More something to, just for interrupts, if you got in that yeah, situation. I, in my opinion, yeah. Yeah. Would you I ever... think you do more poke damage with Roar on the front line than, than Blessed Hammer does on the back line, for example. Would that ever change uh, your talent picks for 7 or 13 if you ended up going with Blessed Shield? Um, no, I'd still take the same. You keep going in and out of this bush here, doing a little bit of warden for everybody. Sometimes you participate mm -hmm. in the clearing, sometimes you don't. Is there any rules for those who would like to learn better tanking? Uh, well, generally, you want to hold... Uh, bushes for the team. You want to be the one who's face shaking the bushes. You want to hold the bush. You want to do something called anchoring. Uh, it's when you stand in a bush like this and you give vision uh, for your team so they know where the enemy team is so they can play more safe. See, Ruth is waiting for me to come and check the bush before he goes in um, because Varian can't burst me, but he can burst out Ruth. So, um, but if you generally, if you know where the enemy team is, you don't have to anchor a bush, then it's just better. Help with the wave clear, help with the camp clear, or whatever it is. But when you don't know where the enemy team is or what they're doing, you should generally hold a bush, hold vision for your team as a tank. So right now you're going around through the enemy side of things, but we see several in the mini map. So not a big. Oh, how did you... I guess you saw that via the uh, the Hanzo arrow there? Yeah, yeah. Either way, it looks rather impressive from up here. <laughs> We're approaching. 16 and mm -hmm. oh wait what oh we have another excellent dive right. yeah that was just a little crazy move i thought there were more top sides so i could have looked for it but my team swiftly called me back to retreat and i managed to retreat in time so 
was just uh, I was just looking for a chromi. Got her ice block out. It was a trade, I guess. But you're already again at that 30 second cooldown. Why mm -hmm. not give it a shot? Other than exactly. the rotation that happened near you. Exactly. So Holy Renewal seemed like a bit of a surprise pick. Uh, fanaticism just feels so good to be zooming around, but mm -hmm. it is based on Iron Skin. Exactly. And while active, if it disappears and is no longer active, you wouldn't get it anymore. So yeah. despite the need so to maybe continue to blind things like Tychus, you are now using it as a healing tool. Mm -hmm. Well, they have like a very frontline killing cop, so the extra heal will help you. I would, uh, I would go the, 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 the fantastism talent if I had the, the D level one as well. But since Varian just one shots um, my shield, which is level 13, um, the value you get from from putting talents in your uh, iron skin is uh, very very little. You don't get a lot of value from it. Because if the variant is good, as soon as you use your Iron Skin, he will use his Shattering Throw and just remove it. So it's just a better talent choice, specifically this game versus Varian. Versus any other tank, I would have gone um, the Iron Skin talents. Is there any reason to do Imposing Presence when you're being focused fire, like this team is doing to you? Mm, I don't think so. I think the healing will negate more damage than the Imposing Presence will do. In my opinion. So in this moment, things look absolutely like chaos. You guys have a really yeah. good control of the map, macro-wise, and you've got a camp in the top going with a superior catapult, so there's no reason not to make this a long fight. Mm -hmm. But in a, in a Storm Lake environment, uh, Hanzo would be angry that you disappeared into space and left him with no one in front of him. Mm -hmm. Why did the Falling Sword go south rather than towards where the main team was around Varian, Leoric, and the Tychus? Uh, well, the plan was for the Hanzo arrow to also hit the backline, but Skoog actually played it pretty good and he blocked the Hanzo arrow, so he positioned himself between Hanzo and his backliners to, to tank that arrow. Um, so it was just a very good play by Skoog. And... Um, to be honest, this fight was kind of chaotic. There was a lot of things happening, and people were not really 100% on the same page. Um, but the the overall general thing was that the arrow should also hit the backliner, but Skog uh, blocked it uh, very nicely. So actually, it was, a, it was a great play by the enemy side instead of something yeah. that was more uh, a mistake on our end here. For sure. Then yeah. you get into Light Bomb, you're already on top, and now the whole thing just starts swinging in y'all's favor. And mm -hmm. you immediately are able to go back to the pit and start going there. Yeah, I'm like the main um, team fight shot caller in the team. So I kept yelling chase, chase. And as soon as we killed the, the last target, which was Leoric, I think, as soon as he died, I told my team to go back with only more kills. And um, they listened and we went back and got, uh, got the shrine for free there. So it was pretty good. And here, even with uh, Anduin being a little bit slower of a healer, you are topped off mad quick with all your tools mm -hmm. you got in the toolbox now. Exactly, yeah. I got the Holy Renewal and the Loss of Hope, which um, helps a lot versus poke damage. Um, so with those two talents and the two globes from the Shrine, it just tops me off to full mana or full HP. As you start to approach the late game here, has mm -hmm. the enemy team changed the way you play at all? Um, not really. It's just I gotta be a little bit more careful for the Shattering Throw from level 13. But generous and since then, nothing has really happened. So we just keep having the same game plan of just diving the white main. As we can see again There's with the combo. Good, I mean, <laughs> from this point of view, without the shot Collins. That was on the edge of your screen here. We're watching your view. Yeah. So such a sudden switch to go from over and in tomb even to on mm -hmm. top of the white main. Yeah. Well, since we're uh, we're calling at this moment um, before the white main kill that we are looking for kills. We want to pressure end, like we want to end. But to end, you need to 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 pressure end uh, and get a kill or two. That's the only reason. That, that's like the way you end in Heroes of the Storm most of the time when you go core and the enemy team is up is that you want to pressure end so the enemy team does a mistake trying to defend their core and you can kill them on core and then you can end. So the, the call we were there was always look for a kill and we're like, can we look for white main, look for white main and as soon as we saw her start channeling her her heal, her, her W, 
which make her standing still. We knew she was an easy target and we could just um, gone her. Now you made the investment at level 20 into Heaven's Fury. While in the air, rain holy boats down for damage mm -hmm. and reduce the cooldown of Falling Sword by three seconds per each enemy hit, so not just heroes. Yeah, this is a crazy good talent. This is like what makes Falling Sword so good. And it's also, honestly, it's so fun to just play around with this. Um, since it works on any enemies or enemy structures, you can use it uh, oh. just to, to target the the wall, for example. But in this um, particular game, I didn't want to do it because they have the Entomb, they have the Variant Taunt. So I was very scared of doing this like this time. But in general, sometimes when I play Hana, I just poke down the the buildings with the, with the ultimate as well. And at this point, they've certainly seen your tricks before. They know to be blocking the Hans Weir, as we saw earlier. Yeah. They know the Light mm -hmm. Bomb is going to be with it. Yeah. So you can actually use this, and you do coming up for the next objective to yes. bait out their response, be on like 15 second cooldown, and do yeah. it again. So right now we're calling, uh, we're talking about their 20. They're gonna have the white man ult, which makes like an AOE cleanse um, and the 40 armor. So it's gonna be very hard to 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 kill her with the combo because she's just gonna press R and she can't get stunned. So her whole combo falls apart because she will just run away. So the plan now we're talking about is because of the CD reduction Holy Fury gives you, um, or the Johanna upgraded ult, uh, we bait out the white man ult by only using the Johanna ult on her uh, to get that short cooldown reduction again on it. And then after the ult is back up, we are gonna engage again. Um, and if I'm in a scary situation, uh, we will use one of the Anduin's pull, because he on 20 has the double pull, so he can pull twice in a teamfight, basically. Uh, so just as an extra precaution, in, the, if, in the case they're trying to kill me when I fall in Sword In, he's just going to pull me out and we're going to reset, and then we wait and go in with our real combo. Oh, and we'll see, uh, yeah. I, I didn't know about the, the two charges leap of faith either that would help make them mm -hmm. make a mistake on the enemy side. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. It's very good versus uh, in Tomb, especially on 20. <laughs> so right now I'm calling out that I'm baiting the ult, and we got it, exactly what we wanted. And here I am just shouting to X-Ray, pull me out. He does, and then the call is to reset, and then go in with the combo again. Uh, <laughs> sadly, Dino uh, kind of makes a mistake now. Um, he goes a little bit too early, because as you can see, I don't have the ultimate up yet. I'm not sure if he didn't know, but he goes in and just gets deleted. But luckily, Answerer comes out, we get the Lightning Bomb combo anyways, one shot, and then we just clean up some from there. Wow, now they're on the run, you got completely split. 18 second mm -hmm. cooldown again on the other side of that. Yeah. Do you... And from, from there is just an easy victory. Yeah, they're dead for, for quite a bit of time. Yeah. And are, would this shot call change to go core maybe earlier of getting those kills if you had that Vala, Rainer, Zul'jin sort of thing. Is it is it more of a limitation of what Hanzo and Tracer can do on a core? Uh, it's more in general that the cores nowadays is more powerful. They got the extra defense. This core can, for example, damage and root around it. Um, so coring has become a little bit more difficult unless you have um, the man advantage. Okay. Or like if, if you win a late game team fight, you should always be able to, to core most of the times. Um, so people that play in this level usually knows that they can core, so they don't have to finish the objective or do something like that. They know, like, they've been, been through it so often, so they know, like, okay, in this situation, we always core. It's game. We have won before even arriving at the core. Is there anything you would like as a, a Johanna player, as a tank main and a shot caller, to see happen to her kid? Anything that would make her more exciting, more interesting, or talent incentivization? Hmm... I don't think so, honestly. I think she's in a pretty good spot as she is. I think she fulfills her need as a hero and her niche. Um, so I don't think she's in, in very need of that many changes. Um, I, mm, I can't think of anything, actually, that I would want to, to have her change with her. I think she's in a pretty good spot right now. She, maybe she's a little bit too strong. Um, but I'm not sure. Maybe I nerf her numbers a little bit. She certainly has it all. Everything you would want out of a tank. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly picking her early isn't an issue, which is really nice for everybody else who doesn't want to pick her early. Exactly. She's very, very flexible and she can like be used in 
many different ways, like an engager, like a peeler. Um, she 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 just doesn't show what your comp wants to do if you pick her early because she's so adaptable. Well, thank you for all the information and awesome to hear mm -hmm. uh, from the shot caller as well of this match. And yep. you guys had a lot of very decisive moments. Uh, good luck mm -hmm. to the whole team in the rest of the CCL. Be sure to cheer yep. for Lauber and Crowd Control out thank there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, follow here on Heroes Hearth YouTube. Like and subscribe as well. Ring that bell. And I will see you <laughs> next week with more Learn to Play content for Heroes of the Storm.